three members of the Head Hunters Motorcycle Club, who caused the shooting in the lobby of the luxury Sofitel Hotel, have been sentenced to prison at the Auckland High Court. The trio were among the six men accused of participating in the high-profile tit-for-tat shooting on a busy weekday morning in April 2021, amid escalating tension with the rival club the Mongols. The six accused were Hone Rayana, Tyron Panapa, Fred Tanuvasa, Marcus Nielsen, Parer Paikia and a sixth man who has named suppression. Hone Rayana, Tyron Panapa and the third member, were found guilty by the jury and were given prison sentences by Justice Simon Moore in the High Court of Auckland. The shootings were a part of gang war, between the long-established headhunters and newcomers the Mongols. Patched member Hone Rayana admitted firing the gun at the Mongols' associate who had jumped ship and was formerly a headhunter's prospect. Tyron Panapa and the third member with name suppression were found guilty of being party to discharging a firearm with intent to cause grievous bodily harm after the shooting at Sofitel. Just before 9 a.m. on April 15, 2021, a Mongols associate who was a former Head Hunters member sat in the hotel lobby speaking with a staff member. Rayana then walked past the lobby and spotted his target. He turned, stopped and reached into his shoulder bag and pulled out a small handgun and fired two shots towards the two men. The target and the staff member ran taking cover after bullets narrowly missed them. The couple then plunged down to the floor and scrambled into the hallway that led them crawling to the back office. The entire incident was caught on hotel's cameras, and was later released by police to the media. The footage was played in the court several times in front of the jury as well. Rayana then jogged out of the Sofitel to escape in a black Nissan Navara waiting outside. There was no room for Panapa and the other head hunter, so they walked to the Lacoste store on Queen Street, and bought and changed into new clothes. The pair then had a burger for breakfast, before Panapa hired a e-scooter and returned to the Sofitel to surrender. Unlike Panapa, Rayana did not surrender but escaped, and after six weeks on the run, police caught up with him, in a rural property in Kerry Kerry where he had been hiding. The 27-year-old refused to say anything other than stating that he was the most wanted man in New Zealand and was proud of that. However before the start of the trial, in November 2022, Rayana pleaded guilty to discharging a firearm with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. The offense carries a maximum penalty of 14 years in prison. Patched head hunters, Fred Tanuvasa, Marcus Nielsen, associate Parer Paikia and the man with name suppression, maintained their innocence and pleaded not guilty. Paikia and Nielsen were in the black Nissan Navara waiting outside the hotel, while Tanuvasa was at the Sky City Casino. Three were acquitted. Panapa was sentenced to three years and six months in jail. He had also admitted unlawful possession of firearm including a prohibited semi-automatic weapon, explosives and possession of cannabis for supply. Rayana, the shooter, was handed the longest sentence, three years and ten months imprisonment. He was given credit for pleading guilty prior to trial and for his deprived upbringing. The man with name suppression was sentenced to three years and five months imprisonment, with the judge noting his lesser role in the shooting and his similarly difficult upbringing. His mother was closely linked to Black Power and his father was a member of the Head Hunters. In the sentencing, the judge said that this was a revenge hit ordered by senior Head Hunters members. And the group were nothing more than a scapegoat or the dog's body. This all started when shortly after midnight on Tuesday, April 6, 2021, a Mongol member's car, parked outside on a trailer was torched with a firebomb. Security cameras captured footage of a headhunter youth driving past suspiciously at the time, and was abandoned two kilometers away and set alight. The following night, gunshots were fired in retaliation into a gymnasium in Browns Bay owned by the headhunters. Two days later, the headhunters hit back when 21 rounds were fired at Northside Power Sports at 5.15 a.m. That same day, the head hunters turned up at Sunrise Avenue in Murray's Bay where a group of Mongols were living. There was a tense standoff outside the property just after 5 p.m., in which one of the Mongols could be seen holding a pistol behind his back, before the head hunters drove away. Someone came back later that night and around 10.30 p.m., he sprayed the house with at least 21 rifle rounds. 
The tit-for-tat feud was escalating. Headhunters torch the car, Mongols shoot the gym. Headhunters shoot the motorcycle shop, then target the home of a senior Mongol. And on 11th April at least 30 semi-automatic rounds were fired into the well-known headhunters pad at 232 Marua Road. And then finally the Safadel Hotel shooting happened on 15th April which led to the arrests. It is believed that the war is linked to the power and territory share in the lucrative drug business and it is still on, even though most of the linked members of the Mongols and the headhunters are behind bars. The Headhunters was formed in 1967 as a street club in Glen Innes, Auckland. Police are concerned by the rapid growth of the club, which has hundreds of patched members nationally. Some are involved in drug manufacturing and supply, debt collection and intimidation. The club uses its pads for gyms, fight nights or similar events to recruit members. They became a legally incorporated society in 1996. Detective Sergeant Craig Martin Turley said in 2000, the Headhunters Motorcycle Club is considered one of the most dangerous organized criminal operations in New Zealand. It controls the West Auckland crime scene. According to New Zealand Police, the Headhunters are an organized crime group, using companies, societies, and trusts to hide their proceeds of crime. They have strategically made alliances with the Hells Angels, the Filthy Few, and the Nomads. The organization has patched over smaller regional gangs, allowing them to become headhunters, providing they adhere to the business model. The reach of the headhunters is multinational, with links to the Asian organized crime syndicates well known by the New Zealand police. These connections are the main connection for the headhunters acquiring their supplies for their methamphetamine operations.